Hi, I'm Pam and we're in my kitchen where I share with you some of my favorite recipes or those most requested by friends and family. Today I'm going to be making smashed baby potatoes with rosemary, shallots, and sea salt. Now you can use any small potato. It can be a red potato, a yellow potato, a purple potato. Um, I will tell you that purple potatoes, if you've not ever used them, they're kind of strange looking inside. I mean, they're a purple and I don't think they'd be the prettiest choice for this recipe. I think a red or a yellow would be better. But um, we're gonna use small potatoes about this size. You do not need to peel them. The skin is very tender. Now, small potatoes are harvested early in the season before the sugars in the potatoes turn to starch. So a small or young potato is about 25% less carbohydrate. I just thought that was an interesting fact that you might not know. So simple recipe, it doesn't take very long. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to put our potatoes, and this is about two pounds. If you've got four or five people, this should be enough. If you've got a bigger crowd, double the recipe. And speaking of the recipe, I will always share the recipe under the video. All you have to do is find the word more in bold print, touch it, and the recipe will drop down. So we're going to add about two inches of water on top of our potatoes, and I'm going to put it on the stove, and I'm gonna bring it to a boil, then turn the heat down for 10 to 12 minutes until our potatoes are fork tender. We don't wanna overcook them to the point where the skins are all peeling back and the potatoes are mushy. We just want to be able to crush the potatoes. And so we do need to be able to get a fork in them. So we'll take those over to the stove in a minute, but the other thing we're going to do is we're gonna take a small saucepan. Uh, I like to use this one for melting butter, but whatever small saucepan you have, add one stick, well, not quite one stick of butter, actually. We're gonna do about six tablespoons. There's eight tablespoons in a stick of butter. So we're going to put that in our pot and we're gonna reserve the other two tablespoons. And we're going to add some smashed garlic. And we could, if you're not a big fan of garlic, you could just throw these um, pieces of garlic in with the butter and just let it mildly season the butter. We like garlic here, so I'm going to um, chop up my garlic a bit. But um, anyway, just chop it up a little bit. You could even, if you have a fancy tool for mincing garlic, you could mince it because this is going to get poured over our potatoes and the smaller it is, the less noticeable the garlic would be. But like I said, if you're a fan of garlic, then you won't mind there being some chunks. But that is about two cloves of garlic. So we're going to cover our potatoes with water, take it over and cook them. We're gonna melt the butter on a very low heat. You don't wanna burn it, you just wanna melt it slowly while the potatoes are cooking. And we will come back and finish the recipe. Okay, our potatoes have come out of our cooking fluid. And by the way, I didn't mention, but I do add about a teaspoon of salt to the water. They have cooked for about 12 minutes. They're fork tender and they are cooling. My butter with the garlic is melted and ready for me. Now, we're gonna prepare our toppings for the potatoes. And I've got my oven preheating to 475. 25, excuse me. So the first thing we're going to do is chop our rosemary. Rosemary comes in the grocery store in a plastic package like this, or it might be in a fresh little bundle along with the other produce. Um, I would definitely recommend you use fresh rosemary. If you do not like rosemary, thyme would be an okay substitute, but I think rosemary enhances the flavor of these potatoes so much more than time, but some people just don't like it. So anyway, I've got a couple of stalks of uh, rosemary 
leaves that I've just stripped. And I want to show you how easy it is. You just take your rosemary stem, and I'm using about three stems of rosemary for this recipe, but you can do it according to your uh, liking. Just take it like this and go against the way that it grows. If you go this way, nothing's going to come off, but if you go against where it grows, it, it all just peels off and it's that simple to get the rosemary leaves off. Most of them come off and then just remove the rest yourself. And then we need a sharp knife and we're going to dice this rosemary, not super fine, just break it up into little pieces. There. All right, I'm gonna push that aside. Now, our potatoes, they're cool. I can handle them now. They're still a little warm, but we're going to take one potato at a time and we're gonna smash it about halfway down. You don't wanna smash it all the way down and make a pancake out of it. We're just smashing it halfway just to open up the potato so all the good toppings can saturate it. Okay. And we're just going to go through and do this to all of them and lay them on a parchment lined baking sheet. I've actually not used parchment and there's enough butter in this recipe that if you don't have parchment, uh, you can just lay them down. The butter keeps the potatoes from sticking. Uh, so that's not really a problem. And if your potato breaks up, just, it's okay. Just Throw the extra pieces on the cookie sheet. And if you don't have a little handy spatula like this, I like using the spatula because then I can scoop it up and move it to the cookie sheet but uh, or the baking sheet. But if you don't have one, you can use a plate or a glass, the bottom of a glass. It doesn't matter. Just something that will smash your potatoes. Okay, so I've got all my potatoes smashed and on my baking sheet. I'm going to take my melted butter and a large spoon and I'm just going to drizzle the butter over all the potatoes. Just make sure that you hit each potato with a bit of butter and garlic. If you find that you like more garlic, or even more butter. You can melt, melt more in the beginning and uh, add it. There really is no exact amounts to this recipe. You can use as much potatoes as you want, as much garlic as you want, as much butter and rosemary. This is just the way we like it. So there, I've used up all of my butter Now I'm going to add my rosemary, and we like lots of rosemary. Sometimes I cut up more than I need and I just hold it back, but um, anyway, we're going to sprinkle the rosemary on these potatoes. That looks good to me. I think I'll leave the rest there. We're going to take some fresh ground pepper and go all over the potatoes. Good. Now, you don't have to use Malden sea salt, but this is large flakes of salt, and there is just something so satisfying about biting into these potatoes and getting a big old flake of salt. So, if you want to use it, you can find it in most supermarkets, but you can use kosher salt or table salt or uh, anything, any kind of salt you want. And as far as the amounts go, again, it's just to your liking. So that looks good to me. Now, I'm gonna put this in the oven and let it bake for 30 to 35 minutes. And I'm going to cut up some shallots with you and uh, we're going to uh, caramelize them. And then we will add those to the potatoes once they're done. All right, I've got my shallots here. I don't know if you've ever 
cooked with shallots, but they are in the onion family. They have that papery skin like onions. They are milder than onions, so I find that they're a nice substitution for onions when I want to add some to maybe a vinaigrette or a quiche or just putting them over vegetables or whatever. They are a little pricier than onions. I paid, um, I think, $2.99 for these two. So they do cost more, but they do add a bit of elegance to your recipes. Now, these are obviously two different sizes. Um, I would call this a large shallot and this one not so much. So some recipes may say a large shallot, but this would be one shallot, this is one shallot. When we cut them open, there's actually two or three cloves in these shallots. And if you got a larger shallot, there might be up to six cloves. Uh, similar to uh, a clove in a garlic bulb when you open it up and there's sections. So let me just show you what we're going to do here. We're going to cut off the ends. And then it's kind of helpful to cut it down the middle. And then you can just easily peel off the papery skin. And then you can slice them into rings or half rings because I've cut it in half. Or you can dice them up into uh, like you would an onion. Uh, it just depends on how you cut the shallot. But what we're going to do is caramelize these shallots. So a lot of times when you're cooking onions or shallots, depending on the recipe, you're just going to cook them till they're translucent, that you could kind of see through them. Uh, not with this recipe. This recipe, we're going to cook them until they're a really nice golden brown and they're caramelized. And they are so delicious at, like that that um, I could eat them just like that. You know, uh, in the grocery store, those cans of like onions that you can buy, I, I don't buy them, but I think it's what people put on those green bean casseroles and they're kind of crunchy onions. This is what we're going to do to these shallots. They're not fried, they're just cooked in butter and we're going to caramelize them. So it's similar to that. So there, I've got all the skin off except this one little piece that wants to stay stuck there. Clear that out of the way. Now, if I wanted to dice them, I could slice it this way and then cut this way. For this recipe, it doesn't really matter whether you dice or you slice. I could just slice the shallot this way and I get half rings, which is fine too. Just kind of separate them before you put them in the pan. So I'm gonna just cut these all up and I'm going to add them to this pan after I've melted the butter and they're just gonna cook on a very low heat and I'm gonna stir them and watch them until they're caramelized. And when those potatoes come out, we'll add them to the potatoes. Okay, I have just taken our uh, potatoes out of the oven. As you can see, they have nice browned bits all over the top. My shallots have caramelized nicely and they've, uh, they're just kind of like little fried bits of uh, shallots now and I just cook them very slowly. It took about as much time as the potatoes did. You just want to cook them slowly. If you need to add a little more butter so they don't stick to your pan, that's fine. If there is a buttery residue left when you're done caramelizing, you can take a paper towel and just dab some of that up. So now I'm just going to sprinkle my shallots over the potatoes. I think this is the icing on the cake, so to speak. But if you have family members that do not like onions or anything in the onion family, please just leave the shallots off or just sprinkle them on part of the potatoes. Now, I like to serve these potatoes with a steak or a piece of fish or even chicken. If you're vegetarian, you can pick a plant protein and uh, round that meal off with some vegetables or a salad, and it just makes a really nice meal and very impressive for guests. If you are enjoying the content of my videos, please give them a thumbs up and uh, leave a comment if you try something and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Bye.